Yeah, and mm. then the, the the next day, the article that came out from the Streets Time is like MOE clears the air mm. uh, yes. on the slides, right? Yes. And then yeah. like I'm, I I get a lot of my sources mostly, or I get I read them mostly on Twitter, uh. yeah. and then people will retweet the article with a quote tweet, and then like. PSI after MOE clear the air, 500 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Before the next episode of the Yalabad podcast, here's a little message from Folklory. Now, buying a meaningful gift for someone's birthday or anniversary is hard. And it gets harder the older they are. If you've got an event coming up in March or April and are still looking for a present for, say, your mom, how about a Folklory? Each Folklory is an audio recording with someone that captures their favourite stories of your mom. We then turn that into a studio quality recording that your mom can listen to anytime she wants. So imagine your favorite podcast, except that the subject is your mom. Of course, this could be done for anyone. We have recorded hundreds of folklories for parents, for children, for siblings, for friends, and even colleagues. And if you order by 6 March, you'll get a limited edition Bluetooth speaker with your purchase. It's styled as a good old cassette mixtape, and it'll come preloaded with your folklories so you can start listening as soon as you receive it. You can find out all the info you need at folklory.com and you can also chat with us directly on WhatsApp at the link in the show notes. So check it out because we would love to help you create something special. And now, on to the podcast. What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, yeah, man. A lot of good old humor. And today we'll be talking about news with a touch of humor and also a touch of someone who like lives and breathes comedy. Yeah, that's why I said a lot of humor. A lot Today of humor. Today's going to be funny one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's expectations up, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's gonna be your your most watched episode. I have a strong feeling. Actually. Wonderful, yeah. man! I like that confidence. Uh, yeah. And and the voice you hear is none other than Jackie Ng, stand up comedian, uh, serial podcaster. Yeah, mm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cast member on two podcasts, lah. Right? Ah, two I'm on, podcasts. I'm on the more better mm. podcast. I'm on just saying. Yeah, we, they both record in the same studio, which is how that's possible. Even though oh. you're not. No, uh, by watching that. There's not like confidential info that you just leaked. Uh. No, no, no. I think the studio is more than happy to to let people know about their, 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 their wide range of uh. decorations they can provide. Mm. <laughs> oh, we forgot another thing in your CV. Yeah. Uh, the highlight, you know, when yeah. you were one of the the main actors in our TV series. You forgot, yeah. right? Are you, yeah. are you saying I'm the main actor? Because one you, of, one of, one you of. You look at the poster beside <laughs> you. Where the, where's my face? <laughs> <laughs> The, the, you are okay. you are all the main actors. One you know of I mean? the actors. Yeah, I'm, I'm an actor on, on the thing. <laughs> Supporting yeah. actor. But it was fun though. That was that was definitely the most exciting role. Yeah. Oh, Honestly, okay, okay. like acting in that has um set a new bar for me oh. as an actor. Right, like now I will not do anything that people ask me to audition for. Because oh, I didn't have to audition for your for your show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? If I didn't have to audition for that and like can do such a good job, don't ask me to audition for your stuff. <laughs> ah, so that's the reason. <laughs> la, that's the reason. I was going to say, I thought it was the experience or something. That yeah, like, that's like, why. Like, oh, definitely. That. Like having the experience, like, like I've worked with these guys. Like trust, trust us. Oh, trust, oh, oh. trust them to make me a good actor. And yeah. I mean, that role, it, it was a fun role. Like, because for those who are listening and watching, uh, it was in our TV show, She's a Terrorist and I Love Her. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you played... Uh, the Kaya King. La. Uh, Alex. Alex, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex, yeah. the Kaya King, who has a Kaya shop that, you know, sells Kaya toes and all, but it's actually just a front for a huge loan shark business. Mm. A crypto loan shark business. Crypto loan right? shark like, business. That's, that's all the details. And, and you also made a big sacrifice for playing that role. La. You actually I shaved uh, I did. your moustache in oh your beard. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Like, oh, that was when man. I was really looking like a child. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you did a solid job and if only we could make a season two. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that like is that completely off the table now? Do you think in your mind? I mean, never say never. Right. Uh, who knows what can happen? But at this point, yeah, there's no right. likelihood of it's that. Very unlikely. Okay. I think very creatively unlikely. also you sort of move on from certain things after yeah. some time. You know, yeah. like once it's been in your mind for that long, living rent free. Then okay, time to move on. Really, for sure. Yeah. Go. And also, I I mean, like I love the show and I love working with on it and I love every single one of it. But I honestly do remember watching it on YouTube when it came out again. Mm-hmm. Like it's a bit dated. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah Post COVID. Sure. Yeah, 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 correct. Post COVID. Um, yeah. The jokes also don't don't land as well really because yeah. of that the era and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now with so many things happening in the world around terrorism. That's mm-hmm. true. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wait, before oh, we move on segue. to the, oh, stuff, yeah, correct, I'm correct. doing a show on the 13th of. <laughs> 
don't worry, Jackie, Jackie. Don't worry, right? yeah, we were not going to forget. Take that, take is, that is the, the only reason I am here. <laughs> <laughs> so, 13th of March. So, tell us about March. the show. Tell us about the show. Well, it's uh, it's called Cuckoo Bird of Value. That's, Cuckoo the Bird of Value. That's the title of the show. Oh, nice. Uh, it's happening on the 13th of March at the Projector Cine Leisure. Mm. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's it's an hour of jokes that I've written, worked shop around the region mm. so i was i was going around all of southeast asia last year and these are jokes that you know there's input and there's it works lah in all of these places so i'm mm. happy to do it here we're hoping to tape it have a good recording of it and then we'll see what we can do with that recording lah. oh mm. sweet yeah. man so nice. we'll hope to fill up the, the place right it's 277 seats if you are free on the 13th of march uh, go and buy a ticket 13th of march is a wednesday yeah wednesday night. what time is it 8 p.m 8 p.m. Mm, yeah. So it'll be like an hour plus. You have some opening acts, you know? Yeah, Fucker Fast is hosting. Oh, wow. nice. Yeah, and then we have three new comedians, uh, Rajiv, Bree, and Devin mm. will be opening for the show. Oh, yeah. man. You've done a one-hour show before? I've done several. Several, yeah. 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 Mm. The, the first one I've ever done is actually up on YouTube. Ah, oh, okay. I think it's called an hour of comedy by a face, a, a hairless face. Because ah. there was actually, <laughs> I think I did that b- during while we were shooting. filming. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's up on YouTube, and you can go and check it out. But that's just like a one camera thing, like it's my iPhone shooting there, and I ah. uploaded a whole hour on. Mm. Uh, yeah. so, and but this will be a nice shooting. Like we got a whole crew, and I'm paying a crew. So let's try and make it worth it, like, and Okay, it's solid, it's man. So, so yeah, if you're listening, if you're watching. Please show some love to Jackie. Yes, please. But I'm uh, much curious yeah. also, like, before before moving on from yeah. that, like what, um, I mean, without spoiling anything for anyone, like the broad themes of what you're going to talk about in this show, do you, do you have a general broad theme that you're going, going well, it's on? It's essentially about? the story of my life last year like, with some mm. creative liberties. Mm. Ah, okay. Last year was the year I, I left a full-time job to try and really pursue stand-up. Okay. And then going on tour, going around the region and meeting old friends and just observations from around the region as well. Mm. So that's what the show is essentially about. So oh, for okay, people okay. who have been watching you, you know, like uh, be it that one hour or the hour shows you've done so far, the stuff you've uploaded on Spotify, yeah. Uh, what is different in this show? What is different? Wow. I mean, I think this is just like the best version of myself so far. Mm. Right, like we, uh, mm. this is my tenth year doing stand up actually. Tenth year, tenth year anniversary, sometime in maybe July. Um, and so this is the the best version of myself as I've I've went on that tour, gone back to all these different places to perform and really like sharpen these jokes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to bring them back to to just do it for a Singaporean audience. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't know about different, uh, but if you like who I am, I think there's going to be more of what you like and and ho- the jokes that you will keep telling your friends, uh, I hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time you're performing in Singapore. Uh. But, but you, you I, performed I, the jokes before? Yeah, I've done the jokes, just not in the show as it is presented as it is. Mm. Got it, got it. Oh, solid, on exciting. Yeah. It is. And then on the 14th of March, I'm flying off to Melbourne. Oh, so okay. it's also your last chance to see me for for a good month. Lah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, so you're going to be performing there also? Well, uh, I'm going to attend the, the festival. Uh, mm. uh, I'm attending a wedding before the festival. Uh, got it. I, I don't have any shows booked for the festival, but uh, Dr. Jason Leong has very kindly given me a crew pass. I will be okay. at the festival as his... Uh, one of his crew members. Oh. So I'll just be hanging out with the comedians there. Oh, oh wait, so, watch. so you're not performing at the festival yet? La. I mean, not, nothing yeah. lined up and yet. Nothing lined up. La. But I I, oh. I do know people that are running shows. I'm going to just go and talk to them when I'm there. Oh, is, that, is that how it works? Like you sort of show up and like, you know, like... Well, yeah. there, there are better avenues to like, you can always talk to people in advance and book shows in advance and all. La. But okay. it's my first time. I figure I'll just take it easy, go and check out the festival essentially oh I see wow actually that's quite cool you be on the ground you meet people because this is a yearly thing right the Melbourne Comedy Festival Mm. because that's what I did in Southeast Asia last year right like when I was in Malaysia I would just start texting people in Bangkok to be like hey when are the shows and then I would fly to Bangkok and I would do the shows and when I'm in Bangkok I would message the people in Vietnam Mm -hmm. and I would just go to the open mic and then you just start talking to the comics and then you find out where's the next show and like what's gonna happen next uh? Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I mean, there's a, a, I mean, a real big community of comedians all across Southeast Asia that help help each other out with these kind of things also. Lah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've always felt like if you're a stand-up comedian, you you share this sort of bond. Lah, mm. that, you know, if you if you see someone, you definitely help them. And yeah. I feel at home at a comedy club, comedy show, whenever I'm traveling. Uh, 
So okay. I'm just comfortable to be like, okay, I'm sure somebody will hear. Like not all of us, even if they are assholes, I I I kind of know why they are assholes lah. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, so you feel yeah. comfortable like at home on stage, uh, or like just going into a comedy club ah? Uh. Like if I was to travel. Like if I'm lost or whatever, if I know that there's a comedy club, even if I'm not performing, mm. I can go and meet some comedians and find out what's going on. It's like a church, uh, essentially. Yeah, essentially. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh. We can all preach. That's all the preach. Yeah. <laughs> do you have to do... Um, but all do, take turns. Uh. Yeah. Do you have to do turns. anything uh, in return for Jason? Like carry his bags or anything like that as part of his crew? Uh, he hasn't told me, like, but maybe we'll find out when we're there. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll, I'll be happy to do it. Yeah. Anyone else from the region going to be there? Well, uh, Jason's going to be there. Fast has his show there. Mm, I think mm. it's like 11 March to 3rd April, 22nd March to 3rd April. Uh, oh, he's performing like multiple. Yeah, they oh, have their okay. own shows. So they, they have Got their it. shows there. Okay. okay. Uh, Calm is also visiting just like I am. And then we have another two Singaporean guys going down. Eugene and uh, John Harlem, we're also visiting. Ah, uh, um, okay, so, okay. Yeah, and I, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of comedians from all around. So, oh, so that's see. what you, you're calling yourself. You're visiting the, the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm just checking it out. You're kind of like the, those professor, adjunct professor kind of thing at university and all that, right? I, I yeah. guess, but like, I don't know if they... Those, uh, those uh, adjunct stand up comedians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm around. So if you like, you're at a festival, you're like, hey, I got not enough comedian. You can just tell me, and I, I will come. Oh, <laughs> visiting comedian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. so um, how how many years you think it'll take for you to reach the epitome of being a stand up comedian, which is NDP host? Wow, oh, I I hope. I hope it happens. I, I, I really do want to mm. do it. I feel like if I don't get the host of NDP, the next best thing that I have to do would be to run for president. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because like I remember feeling this when I saw like the last NDP when Madam Halima took her seat. I'm like, that is the best, the best seat, right? The best seat for the NDP. The yeah. best seat in yeah. the house. And if I were to run for president, that would be the reason. I want the best seat. At the oh, it's the biggest show on this in this country. Uh, it's yeah. our Super Bowl. Hey, wait, yeah. is it bigger than Taylor Swift or not? Whoa. Now, now that you said that, the mm. organizing department for NDP better listen up. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> lose to Taylor Swift. Uh. You better, if Taylor Swift how got... To, how to beat Taylor Swift? I don't know, man. <laughs> we have to create a new pop star, make the Malayan sexy again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Make the Malayan sexy make again. Make the Malayan Taylor sexy. Hashtag. Does Taylor Swift have any local openness for her? Uh, I don't... Eh, actually, I don't know. Right, because Coldplay had like, Coldplay had Coldplay yeah, had yeah, yeah. and I haven't heard anything in advance yeah. yet right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I mean I'm sure the Swifties know already right. but if we haven't really heard about it means it's probably not a local uh, I but, think I think next week is going to be Mayhem in Singapore la. you the, think so with the first concert is when Monday right yeah Mm. Hey, Monday, Monday, yeah, yeah Monday. Correct. Prices will just be through the roof, lah, right? Yeah. I don't know. It feels like and the news yeah. that will be just and like social media. Even when Coldplay was here, mm. like every time you open up, it's just videos and videos of people at the concert. This yeah. Taylor Swift thing is going to be mayhem, like Yeah, Taylor Swift is going to be even worse. Yeah, you're yeah, you're you're going to be there. Or? I'm not. My, not. my girlfriend will be there. But, but oh. you're going to be outside the stadium singing along. No lah, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. you'll be in Melbourne, lah. You'll be in Melbourne. No, 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 no. I'll Melbourne, be, 14 I'll be, March. No, that's later. Oh, yeah, okay, 14 okay, March, okay, okay. Yeah. I'll be around the comedy room, like practicing for the for the show on the 13th. Oh, uh, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Actually, it should also mean that there's a lot more people in town who might be going to watch that's comedy true. shows or so, like, right? Oh, on the yeah, days yeah, they're yeah. not watching Taylor Swift. Like. If they are still around after she leaves, because she's here till what, 8 March? Yeah, March. So yeah. One full week. One full week. Like. Yeah, because uh, my show's on the 13th. So if they're staying here, maybe I can go fly after the show, right? Uh, uh, yeah. like, hey. That's oh, true. Outside yeah. the stadium, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Prepare some Taylor Swift jokes, uh. You tell them outside. Yeah, you the just stadium. set up a mic with an amplifier or something. <laughs> yeah, just do like a Dave Chappelle and just you shoot on Taylor start. Swift outside her stadium, oh, outside the stadium walk. Dude, that, that will get you a lot. Of great. Then yeah. you give out your flyers at the end of it. Actually, the last few weeks, like there have been, yeah, Taylor Swift jokes would work, like Actually, uh, like for those comedians that have been working on their Taylor Swift set, this is the best time to do it, like Because oh, it's yeah, in la. the public consciousness. Yeah, yeah, I had one bit. It was about how Changi Airport. You all know about this? They had the they trying world, to, is it? Yeah, they're trying to have the biggest Taylor Swift sing along. Sing along. Uh, yeah. That's the, just a Taylor Swift concert without Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's going to go for that? <laughs> it's ticketed. No, really. and I think it'll be sold yeah, yeah, yeah. out. 
I think it'd be fucking sold out. You just go and listen to the, the record. It's literally go and listen to it. It's not even like live mixing or anything. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. Then they can sing along. Then I think the fountain will change color. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. 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 But that's why it's sort of become a cultural event almost, like, right? Yeah. Where people want to just be in the community of other Taylor Swift lovers. They don't need Taylor Swift there herself, like, right? That's, I guess. That's yeah, a crazy yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Fuck, it's also man. interesting that... Um, all the Chinese New Year music stop and is replaced by Taylor Swift. It's like a it's like a new Where? festive, like supermarket, like not supermarket, like maybe like like handphone shop, uh, oh, like is it? coffee yeah. shop at my house. Like they are, they are playing Taylor, Taylor Swift music Swift. because yeah. it's it's like it's the Taylor Swift time of the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas song, the Chinese New Year now Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, then after Taylor Swift, the next thing will be Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no Ramadan songs per se, like, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm saying Ramadan starts on 10th March, yeah, the day after. Much, yeah, yeah, the day after yeah, 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 so yeah. literally the day after Taylor Swift. Right. Yes, yeah, Terrence, I know there are no Ramadan songs. I know, I know. I cra- <laughs> I'm stopping on. you there before you get yourself cancelled <laughs> or something. We <laughs> have a lot of chance to yeah, do that. I meant like the today, cultural, yeah. cultural, the, the, the mainstream uh, uh, thing in the uh, news. Okay, la. okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know the fun things, yeah. We we're not just getting you here to talk about your your oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, stand up, but we're actually here to almost do like a regular episode, yeah, but like of course, yeah. talk about uh, you know one serious topic and one slightly goofier topic, and really see you know uh, your perspective on things, uh, which I think will be quite interesting. You are Gen Z. No, no, no. I'm a millennial. I'm thirty this year. Oh, you're thirty this year. You're on oh. the cusp of millennial, right? I suppose. Yeah. You turned thirty already, or you're still? 20? I turned thirty on the first of March. Oh, oh shit! shit. Yeah. It's two days time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if it wasn't a leap year, it'd literally be tomorrow. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's but a leap year, it's two days yeah. away. Wow. Yeah. Birthday episode. Eh? I suppose, yeah, yeah, birthday yeah. episode. And you know, when you said you were going to come and when I said we're going to talk about news, like, yes, uh, just what happened, the topic we are going to talk about is like, like just intense. La. The, the biggest topic of the year. The biggest topic so of far. the year. Yeah, so far. <laughs> so uh, far. What, yeah. Better, what better episode to join us, Jackie? Uh, yeah. yeah, honestly, I was semi-worried about it, but like the more... I approach this moment the more I'm embracing it. Oh, like, this oh, is gonna happen, right? Oh, we wanna yeah, discuss man. this. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh and I mean it's something that's been in the news the past few days. Yeah. Uh, uh and today is like I mean it's still being chatted about. Mm. Uh and yeah, so so I guess are we jumping straight yeah, let's into jump it. Right into it now. Yeah. Jump right into it. Um it is basically the whole uproar on and discussion that came about uh some slides that were presented in school by teachers mm. as part of a CCE lesson. Yep. Uh, that covered the Israel Hamas conflict. Lah. Um, so it, it, it started off, I think, because there were a lot of parents who posted on MOE's Facebook page and emailed Chan Chun Singh as well, who's the Minister for Education, yeah. about how they felt the slides were not comprehensive enough, were not deep enough, were mm-hmm. biased. And soon start that started making the rounds. I think the yeah. first time I saw it was over the weekend. Mm, yeah, you guys? It was over the weekend. Yeah. Social media also, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and since then, MOE has issued a statement. Chan Chun Singh gave a thirty-minute interview with uh, SPH and MediaCorp. Mm. Uh, and I mean, it's still it's quite polarizing, lah. Yeah. Still yeah. quite polarizing. Um, but uh, I mean, like like when when you first saw those slides, right? What what came to mind? Uh? Um, I mean, it was, it's it's kind of um. Uh, I was quite surprised uh, that these slides came out, to be honest. Like, mm. I wasn't expecting there to be, uh, you know, something being taught to primary school kids, I think. Yeah. It's weird uh, to, just, to just be doing that. Like, why are you doing that? Mm. Yeah. Especially after, I think maybe as, as content creators, as influencers, like, we, we know about people being warned and to be told to take a neutral stance and yeah. maybe yeah. even to not discuss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. and then... And then why are you telling the children to talk about it instead? Yeah. So the moment you all saw it, you all already like, oh shit, this is going to be like, why? Or this is going to be, this is going to blow up. Is it? Yeah, for sure. Strange, uh, strange, for sure, strange. Because as a, as a, you know, have, I've got a small kid, you know, who's at that age of like asking questions about everything already, like, right? Right. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's like, you don't, that you just feel like there's certain conversations you don't even want to go near yet because it's like, as much as, yeah, you want to treat them as like adults and explain things to them. But, Certain things you just don't want to go there yet because it's just too much to explain and 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 that you know their their little minds are still trying to wrap their heads their heads around it yeah. and and why yeah to sort of like because this is being taught by the school you know, as a parent you're pretty much being forced into that position of choosing to have to talk about it right, right. right. so I I felt like wow this is a it's quite a a thing for the school to like okay this needs to be taught to your children and you're go 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 out in the world and talk to your parents about it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you all you all saw the slides or you saw people talking about the slides like over the weekend? People talking about it, yeah. then the slides came later. Like. Uh, why? Uh? Why was that, that no, differentiation? Like like when my, my wife showed it to me on social media, I was like, hmm. Then I, I only saw a screenshot of one slide. Mm. Uh, so then I saw people complaining uh, about it online already. And to me, it was like, okay, I don't know how bad it's going to be. I didn't have the initial thought of like, hey, why is mm. this even coming mm. up in schools? Yeah, I was like, okay, uh, maybe it's just uh, like that vocal minority thing. Let's yeah. see how this pans out. La. Then when I saw the slides, then I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I gave a bit more context. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so, your wife was showing it to you in what context? La? Like she, she was angry or no? She said, "Oh, this is surprising." Uh, and uh, like uh, just wondering what the slides were about, also uh, So we didn't have a whole podcast about discussion about like what she was feeling and all. But yeah. I think she raised it just um, if I assume like it was more like, "Oh, how come this is being taught in schools?" And like, what is this going to cover la? Got it, got it. Yeah. yeah. So, so she was just presenting it to you as a neutral observer. Waiting I, for you to, to get riled up about I it. I believe like. so, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think she was trying to egg me on. She's oh, not like you, la, Terrence. <laughs> you know, I'm just la. thinking what kind of weekend conversations you have with your wife. She presented you. Here, Harish, take a look at this. No, she Why was on thoughts? social media uh, scrolling and then she's like, hey, what, what is this? And then showed me. I see, and then I'll go back scrolling. Huh? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Did back you to... discuss it with your partners over the weekend? <laughs> no, uh, this is not something like uh, yeah, my yeah. partner is that interested. Yeah, oh, not interested. Uh, uh, yeah. A little bit, but yeah, not really. I don't uh. think they'll be presented to me like that right? no I mean it was just shared it wasn't presented oh, okay, she didn't okay, like okay. prepare like a powerpoint presentation <laughs> to go through but then when it, when it started blowing up over the next few days then we were like oh okay 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 yeah and mm. then the, the, the next day the article that came out from the streets time is like MOE clears the air mm. uh, yes. on the slides right yes, and then yeah. like, I'm, I, I get a lot of my sources mostly or I get I read them mostly on Twitter uh. yeah. and then people will retweet the article with a quote tweet and then like PSI after MOE clear the air, 500 or something. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm not wrong, they changed the headline after that, right? They, I they, think they, so, they yeah, because people kept making air. that same joke. Oh, man. Uh, but, but on Twitter and all, what, what do you see the main response to be? Well, I think because I was so active during the last election and or even throughout, I think COVID, my, my Twitter feed is quite left-leaning. Mm. Uh, and, and so a lot of people are very upset la, that, that their kids are, are being forced to to talk about this type of things I think there was oh. one kid that was quite funny like somebody said like the daughter is very angry in the CCE class because the teacher is saying that we have to uh, sh- show care and concern for both sides yeah. and mm. the, the kid is just like but why must you show they're just, just so concern angry for because, Israel like, specifically yeah, right? because she, at home she's just hearing a different thing mm. all the time and so yeah to me it's just so weird that you would teach Harmony with a topic that breeds the most disharmony. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know he he's saying like, should we just let let this thing happen and not talk about it with the kids? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm sure they can grow up and 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 develop their own thoughts about it, Right? Like yeah. it's like doing that is like teaching people how to play basketball by throwing them against Michael Jordan or whatever. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. there are levels to processing information. You know, no, but that was Chan Chun Singh's point, right? That this yeah. was part of the CCE, which is. Uh, which stands for the Character and Citizenship Education. Mm. And he said that this is just one of the many lessons mm. that the curriculum covers. Um, and, and I mean, if you look at the whole curriculum, it is, I, I honestly don't know what a CC involves because they was not present during our time in yeah. school. Yeah. Was you present have, like, civics and moral education? Moral I think education. Moral education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't fucking remember brand, yeah. what I learned there. Same, same yeah, for you. Same. Same. So in this case, like, um, I mean, of course, we don't have the context of what you are being taught. But yeah, as a standalone, it does feel weird that they are teaching this, especially when they don't even allow adults to discuss this in public. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Uh, but then, do you, you all, then eventually you all saw the slides. La. I, I didn't go, like, watch, like, read it fully. Uh, mm-hmm. um, because I figured it's just, it's going to be what everybody is talking about. La. Uh, mm-hmm. Which is which is what? What have you heard so far? Uh, just very two, like, two sides. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they try to show compassion to both sides. And I feel like that is the the, unre- the, the two positions we cannot reconcile mm-hmm. in society, mm-hmm. right? Like one side is saying like we have to be nice to both sides. Yeah. But to the other side, it's if you are showing care and concern to both sides, then you are siding with the oppressors. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. these two positions can never be reconciled. And I think to, to want to have a discussion about it in, in public is just such a s- unproductive thing. Mm, mm, yeah. I think you may, I I thought you made a good point out uh, that um there's levels of complexity to the things <laughs> that you can teach children uh, and yeah. like I mean even as as like children like 
even just teaching them how to live life normally. Like when you walk into an MRT, do you bang the person as you walk in and out? That yeah. kind of thing still needs to be taught even to adults. <laughs> uh. You mean but you don't got, just you don't just let them go into the MRT figure out? Uh? No, exactly. That's my <laughs> yeah, point. Right? Like, even <laughs> us as adults, we still debate about hey, you know, is it rude to blah blah. And then, we, but we're already throwing kids in the deep end and asking them to think about Israel Hamas <laughs> when they haven't even figured out things like that. Like, oh, if that person's if that person got like food from his lunch on his face, uh, do I tell him or not? Uh? Yeah. This kind of thing. I thought those are the kind of things you teach in moral education, uh, right? <laughs> But in the end, they, in the slide, they had the case of Samuel, Samuel and Raju. Samuel, right? True, 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 true. <laughs> actually, actually, yeah, the, the slides-wise, I also only, like, skim through them. Like, but you, uh, you had a very good chance to, like, really look. In fact, you have it right I mean, I have it right in right front of me, you know, like a yeah, full yeah, PDF. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you um, want to just quickly, like, sum up yeah, yeah. So, generally what you see. So, I mean, the first title is it's titled A Better Solution to Resolving Conflict Slash Disagreement, The Situation in Israel and Gaza Case Study. Um, then they go through like, you know, what, how the discussion should be, you know, wait for your turn to speak, listen when other people are speaking, share your thoughts respectfully. Then there's a slide with quotes uh, titled In the News. Mm -hmm. And it's just quotes from, uh, incidentally, All Straits Times. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then just prompting the, the student, what have you heard about the situation in Israel and Gaza? Yeah. Then after that, another quote from Lawrence Wong, where he literally, is, it says like, the Israel-Palestinian conflict is a deeply conflict, complex one and is in bold letters. Um, then the next few slides, just some history on where Israel and Gaza are located geographically. Mm -hmm. um, talked about the size, talked about Gaza being part of the Palestinian territories. Then the, slide, the next slide, which is one of the more contentious ones online, the key events in Israel and Gaza since 7 October 2023. Mm -hmm. And it lists down about eight, milestones from 7th October starting with the Hamas attack all the way up till 22nd December. Mm. Then it talked about Singapore's position on the situation. Then there's a, 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 a survey. How do you feel after listening to what is happening in Israel and Gaza from a little mm. sad to very angry? Smiley faces. Yeah, smiley face <laughs> yeah. to angry face. Singapore's position on this situation. So basically, the, the three points about Singapore's position, like Singapore condemns mm. all acts of terrorism, all states have a right to defend themselves, and we are friends with both Israelis and Palestinians. It does not mean we support everything each side does. Then a slide on our reactions about how people in general have been feeling, sad, angry, what people in Singapore are doing, from donations to religious leaders expressing their solidarity and support. What can we do? How can we manage our sadness or anger? How can we show care for and concern for the people in Israel and Gaza? And then it's like, let's apply what we have learned. And then it's a hypothetical, uh, supposedly hypothet hypothetical situation between Arun and Samuel. I thought it was Raju. Arun, Arun. Arun. Oh, fuck. It's, it's your, Arun. Own, your own prejudices. Yeah, I was like, wow, I've got, got Indian game. <laughs> <laughs> Raju, self, self hatred. Raju and Samuel about being good friends since primary one. Then they decided to compete each other. Then someone threw a punch and blah blah blah. Then there's a few slides for teachers' reference only, which not shown to the students. Then the last few slides are about how we can prevent external events from affecting our harmony, mm -hmm. uh, And and just talking about yeah, like um, how you what would, should you do when you hear hurtful words being said about others because of this conflict? Yeah. What can you do if you're very sad? How to resolve conflicts? Uh, and then ending off with another speech, uh, another quote from PM Lee Sen Lung uh, that mm -hmm. talked about how, yeah, uh, there's, when there's violence in the Middle East, we are all connected to it. Yeah, yeah. So that was essentially the, mm. the summary of the slides, like, if you haven't seen it yeah. yet. So, so for you, like what, when you saw the slides, uh, uh, after your wife presented you this topic <laughs> and then you saw the slides. Like yeah, what? then I presented her the slides. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> Well, what was your first thing? No, so I saw the slides and I can understand the criticism towards it. La, because uh, it does feel like, yes, that it's factually correct. Yeah. But if you're presenting it to children, right? I mean, even if you present this to adults who uh, who read the news and all that, it still covers like uh, one side of it, yes. And you can argue that from 7th October, it covers the facts. Mm. But it like to, to to understand it, which is even tough as an adult, you need to understand more than this. La. Then the question becomes, okay, how far back can you go? La? Yeah. Uh, that's, an, uh, that's another thing to debate. But I did feel these slides uh, like simplify a bit too much. La. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that was what I felt. Uh, for uh, you, how about you, Jackie? Well, the, the fact that all of their sources is the Straits Times is, is a big question mark. It's Why a big not? Red Straits flag. Times is like fucking baller, dude. Of course, but also mm. it's like if you're showing kids these slides about like how to get sources from, I think like, 
subconsciously it's like okay I guess that's the only source I should be getting shit like mm. even if you're talking about state run media there are more newspapers like you can put today you can put even Mothership CNA, whatever it is yeah, to yeah. just tell them like to get your to get sources from different to get different mm, places true. that's one and mm. well but at the end of the day I just don't understand why they pick this topic lah mm. they mm. really don't have to lah I understand you want to teach like character you want to teach conflict you can do all of that without discussing this conflict to the primary school children mm. right I think the biggest thing I feel when you were reading about the reading out the slides is that I just I just don't know how like if I was like primary four yeah <laughs> listening to all of these things like how do I like how do I process that like looking at the people around me and I don't know if people are angry and I, yeah it's just such a a stressful thing for a primary school kid to be going through. Mm. Mm. But but you were saying on Twitter, your Twitter feed is gen- generally more left leaning, lah. Were yeah. you seeing a lot of people complaining from the angle of parents? Who, yeah. Uh, well, what were they saying about it? Like, like were they angry with the content, or they angry that the topic was even being discussed? I think a lot of them are angry at the con, like at the content being like a, uh, a, uh, presented. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. To, that that is all a uh, post October seven. Mm. Mm. Uh, and and all of those things like like yeah. it's just not fair i think uh, i think of, and i think it is the younger people that are going like why is this even taught in the classroom <laughs> oh mm, so so yeah. there's oh. the two there are some people who are just like pointing out issues with the content versus some yeah. people are saying why is this even yeah why why are you even teaching this uh, yeah. mm, but yeah. do you feel that those people who are angry at the content are they sort of saying like um uh like that there should be be more Taught there should be more context. Like we, we want to go back. We really go back all the way, lah. Nineteen forty. I think I've whatever. seen those opinions, lah. I don't know if okay. that's like all the people, but also I think people are just angry. And I think uh, when they're uh, angry, they're just like, why is this like that? But they're not like presenting any, like, uh, alternatives, lah. To uh, like what else should be should be taught instead, or, or see, how much more should be taught. I see. Mm. I see. Yeah. But but maybe, do you do you think that there should be more? Context like given in within these slides like before uh, October seventh and seven October. I don't think so. I think I think okay. So going back to to what you were saying about why is this being taught, right? I'm thinking okay. So let's say again hypothetically, let's say the students are naturally talking about it themselves and they're asking mm. the teacher, okay. right? I mean that's why now we have more classes on sex ed. I think lah. Mm-hmm. I think more classes on mental health because people are talking about it mm. and it's sometimes worthwhile to kind of talk about it in a way that is constructive. Mm. So in this case, I think there's no no way to fix the slides if you want to give the full picture. But that being said, I do feel that maybe there's a way that this can be talked about in a way that's more constructive, lah. But yeah, to answer your short your question, surely I don't. I think once you start going back, then like how how far yeah, you yeah. go back? Yeah, how, how far, far you go back? It'll be like a full semester course, lah. Yeah, yeah, uh. yeah. Because I I just uh, someone did tell me lah that their daughter, I think seven years old daughter or something like that, came up to him one day and said, uh. Papa don't buy Starbucks anymore. Mm-hmm. Then, then he's like, why? Because everyone in school says that Starbucks, uh, you know, supports the oppressor and all mm-hmm. that. So apparently there's a boycott of Starbucks going on in their primary school. Like, you know, kids love sugary drinks, so Starbucks is the first one to go, like, right? Mm-hmm. And he was very shocked and disturbed by it because he did not see it coming. He did not expect his seven-year-old daughter to be talking to him about these kind of things. Like. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I'm just wondering, like, do parents like this, then do they, would they... Do they want the MOE to be teaching their kids, or should they be, you know, taking it upon themselves to talk to their own kids? Uh? Because I, I I have seen situations where where there's certain you know traumatic things that happen in like uh, schools, like uh, right, uh, like maybe a classmate unfortunately some accident or something that happens. Um, certain schools actually make the decision not to talk to the children about it, uh. Like they will explicitly say that our policy is that we're not going to talk about it. Um, but we're telling you parents that we're not going to talk about it, and it's up to each parent to go and tell, talk to your own child about it, lah. Right. Um, and I, when I heard an approach, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I understand where they're coming from because it's like dealing with very complex issues about laws and death and things like that that some some parents don't want to deal with with their children yet, lah. Right. And yeah. so it's up to your parents. You can come up with some story of the, you know they went somewhere or whatever like that, you know. So. I don't know, man. It's a. I found it quite. Uh, I'm just wondering what the thought process was behind MOE saying. That, okay, we got to make these slides about it. 
And then who they arrow to go and make these slides? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, that person is like, this is, the guy he woke up one Monday morning, like, what the fuck kind of like brief yeah. is this I have to do? How come yeah. Arun doing water on yeah. sustainability? <laughs> Samuel doing water on renewable energy? I can add this slide. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll talk about Taylor Swift coming in and how it's good for our economy on it. Then I have to do this. Wow. Israel, how much? Oh, all right. But then when you saw the slides, there's... Uh, maybe unpopular opinion, but I did think I I saw the slides as a little bit of like, oh, okay lah. I mean, it's just trying to present certain facts from seven October. Mm. Uh, I agree that certain things not good. Like I think the newspaper one, you made a very mm. good point uh, mm. that that they could have just varied up the sources, make it look a little bit better. Yeah. Even if you say you have to use state sources, yeah. there are multiple Throwing state a stomp sources. Also, you know? yeah, one in exactly. Tsao Pao, you know, <laughs> one, uh, even Mothership or something like that also yeah, can, so right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but but I did feel like um, the slides were, not not that they're accurate or anything, but I think just in the, given that we're trying to talk to primary school children and all that, right? you also cannot go too deep and too complex and all. And I, I just felt a bit of a nothing burger, lah, in mm. a sense. And and uh, I, I felt that a lot of the outrage is like what you were saying, the diff- is whether the slides, slides like this should even be shown to children yeah. or is it about the content? Lah? And I felt the people who are saying that the content is very wrong or that, um, I'm just wondering what the expectation is. Mm. Is, like, is it like supposed to be a history lesson going back all the way to, you know, thousands of years and, and all the way to talk about UN resolutions, which... Honestly, I don't okay, I don't know about you, but for me, it took me like I don't, a good like week or two of like mm-hmm. reading and watching YouTube videos to really understand everything about this conflict. And even now I still don't understand yeah. everything. Uh. Yeah. So I can't imagine how how to how primary school, like the teacher doing this presentation, twenty slides for primary school children, yeah. what are you gonna put in there? And I mean talking about the people who do the slides, can you imagine the teachers also? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you to have to teach this, we don't even know their own beliefs, their own faiths. Uh and because like, 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 what you also say, like, this one is so... Okay, there are things that happen factually, but your perception of it, it there's a lot of things that come into play. Yeah. So for the teacher to be expected to do it is is also ridiculous. La. Then you know what you're saying about whether as a parent... I'm okay, I don't, ha- I don't have a child, but uh, whether as, if I was a parent, I would want the schools to be teaching this. I would say probably no unless there is a way they are going about it that I feel is constructive. La. Like just now mm. I said, like, okay, are they wrong to want to to try and tackle this? I don't think they are wrong, but the way they did it, this is too prescriptive. Because mm. let's say your kids are talking about it, right? Um, mm. I'm sure there are people who are in a good position to hold these sort of educational uh, things about this conflict. Mm. Probably not mm. a teacher. Yeah. Not to yeah. discount their own expertise, but if they are a teacher of math or science and all that, to suddenly present Israel Hamas conflict is is fucking crazy, yeah, lah, right? Yeah. So so if the students are talking about it, maybe it's even just holding like not say a forum or something, but a space where the kids can, you know, just share what they learn and you kind of guide the discussion, but you kind of let them form their own opinions. Mm, mm. So then in that way, you are allowing the, the students to talk about it. You're not enforcing a certain approach on it. And it has to be conducted by people who are in a better place to do this. Mm-hmm. Were, were you all, uh, I mean, you are, You said you are turning 30 already. Yeah. When 9-11 happened, yeah, you was, were in primary was, school, right? Yeah. Do you remember talking about it or anyone, the teachers, anything about it at all? No, not at all. No. How about, how about you? Do no, you do? I don't remember. Nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. But by then, it was like, for me, it was like past secondary school. Uh, yeah. So, but I don't remember anything. Maybe like they talk about it like, Informally, but no classes about it. Like. Yeah, I was still yeah. in primary school, uh, and it's, yeah, I, I I remember only learning about nine eleven as I got older, like it's, it like it wasn't like a massive thing around yeah. me as mm-hmm. it happened. You know? Yeah, you? but what I was a uh, I was a military veteran during nine eleven. I was I, I served during nine eleven uh, mm. uh, in the Singapore Armed Forces, like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wow, Terrence, what was that like? Yeah. <laughs> Which canteen were you? <laughs> 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 the one that had the best the the best house one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's the why I always tell people uh, uh, as a veteran during 9-11. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um yeah, I mean the, even in the army and all that, there was not much, man. It was like I think I remember we all were like that yeah, listening back then, listening to radio, listening to news about it, but uh, only only later as you know, there was like security things being implemented. Then even the army, then they even talk about it. But they also don't talk about it in a very uh 
how you feel kind of way, like, right? And this one is quite like, it's all about how you feel, like, which yeah. I think <laughs> is what generally things are trending towards these days. Yeah, like. mm -hmm. yeah. But are you saying that maybe like, just because it wasn't done last time, it shouldn't be done now? Um, uh, no, no. I, I do agree that, yeah, maybe with progress. But again, like what, I think you made a very good point that our teachers equipped to deal with it. Like, mm. Because I have been in a situation where uh, there was something, an accident that happened in my school, right? You know, and uh, and then I was a big part of this group of students that uh, was as part of this expedition activity where one of the, there were actually two kids, uh, two kids got in an accident in, mm. during that period, you know. Then, so it was quite a big case back then. And I just remember being uh, shepherded into school counselling. Oh. By a by a teacher who was somehow assigned to become a counselor, so and all I remember it was it was terrible. Like, the counseling sessions were terrible. They did nothing for for any of us. If anything, it was more traumatic to sit through the counseling than to have to deal with it ourselves. So, mm. and I remember there was one time there was like a counseling session where, like I think seventeen, eighteen of us sitting around uh, in a room lah. Then everyone had to recount what they were going through. So it was like literally recounting the the trauma of the experience. And I think by the third or fourth people, person in there. I needed to go to the toilet very badly. Like I needed to really pee just so badly. But I didn't dare to say anything because yeah. everyone was like recounting a traumatic story. <laughs> so I just sat there tahan not going to the toilet uh, for like almost two hours. Oh, uh. shit. Uh. And after that, I think my bladder after that like was 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 injured or something. Like that. So uh. I was just waiting so long. But the whole thing was just felt so like like we're being forced to do something that by people who are not really trained to deal with it properly. Yeah. And I, I just afraid that yeah, when we when we shove teachers into the, this role of yeah. having to uh, do everything, yeah, everything and I manage their, their, their own emotions and all this stuff. Lah. They are also having a discussion about this in parliament right now about the teachers having to do counselling. Mm. About And then, um, I, I forgot which MP was talking about it, but the Dr. Maliki Osman was saying like, um, they are, they are, teachers are expected to do basic counselling. Yeah. Right? Like, mm. in, like immediate situations to talk to children, whatever. But if like it's a serious case or whatever, then like the professional counsellors in school will be the one that take over the case and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, which is, yeah, like it's also like the teachers have to have that skill of being able to talk to a kid if they are tra in, in a traumatic experience or whatever. But yeah. you just, I guess, the way we think about schools is just not complete. There, there just has to be more counsellors yeah. in schools because yeah. it's just so traumatic living. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, the it's teachers just, crazy. They're like, yeah. like superhero like that, man. I mean, uh, the teachers themselves have to be like, yeah. like also, in counsel. good health, right? Yeah. 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 So and and I mean like and then Chan Jun Singh came out and like talked about it. Mm. Uh, and I know Jackie, you spent a lot of time analyzing his speech. I listened to the whole thing, uh, mm. and and he said nothing. <laughs> 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 he explained uh, like, but it's, it's, it's like what I say it's just, people want to know why why are you doing this why yeah. why is the topic included in the slides yeah. yeah and he's just like oh this is the topic we are teaching this this is not a history lesson mm. the, the funny thing is he started the interview by saying like this is not a history lesson yeah. and he yeah. talks about the history about how complex the history is uh. and how people feel and it's like it's, like do you not see the, the irony in that like he himself doesn't really know what he can or cannot say about the thing. Mm, mm. So to expect anybody to 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 hold a discussion is just is wild to me. And that it was like a thirty minute interview, and and really he doesn't answer any question. Mm, I mm. I feel like the first thing I thought was like how angry must Lawrence Wong be with Chan Chun Singh, like after delivering one of the you know, greatest landmark budgets of all time. There's like free money coming to Singaporeans all the way to twenty twenty five, and then this thing happens, mm, and then okay. nobody's talking about the budget anymore. He made like a launch video for the budget. The yeah, TikTok, right? The <laughs> yeah. TikTok, uh, yeah. But now nobody cares about the budget anymore. Everybody's talking about this thing, you know? Uh, and, and Chan Chun Singh made the, I think the interview came out on a, on a weekend as well, right? Yeah. So it's like everyone's working overtime to get that, that yeah. video out. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, it's one of those things that could they not foresee this being polarizing? Mm. Like, even mm. aside from just, okay, they decide to release the slides, uh, I mean, teach the slides, but then, Anyone in their right mind, or at least the comms or whoever in MOE uh, who did this, they should have been able to foresee some sort of backlash. Uh. Mm. And the thing is, they never put the slides anywhere, no? mm. which makes it a bit more like... Trying to hide something. Yeah, why are you trying to hide sneaky. something? Feels yeah, a bit yeah, sneaky. Yeah. La. So this one uh, is like... Yeah, it's 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 just... Yeah, so I, I guess we, we the one thing we can all agree on is that is should this even be taught in schools? La? Mm. Yeah. Right. But, but for you, like when you are out with your friends these days and all, then I'm sure there's some friends who have very strong opinions about 
everything, like, right? Yeah. To you, present you some... some yeah, yeah, or they want to talk stuff, about it. Uh. Do you generally tend towards, uh, yeah, let's go deep or let's not talk about it? Uh, It depends on the person, uh, I suppose. Mm. There are people that I am more comfortable with discussing deeper topics. Yeah. There, there are people that I'm not, uh, you know, so, so it really depends. Personally, I'm, I'm I'm not a big fan uh, because I just find all the talk not the most productive. Mm, mm. It's like, there are all these ICJ findings, is this, is that, is, and just talking about it, like, it, I think some people will argue the other way, like, we have to talk about this. We have to yeah. keep making dialogue to try and make progress. It's like, I feel like there's already so much damage done. <laughs> Mm. like the time for talking and dialogue is long over already like, mm. like there needs to be action now every every single moment like things has to be happening for, for things to get better talking is really the the least productive thing to do at least in my opinion so, so then what can yeah. someone like like you or I do or we just wait for the people to take action I, I don't even know I, I can't even answer that to be honest uh, right like I, I don't know what we can do and I think that's the and I think that is also the the part of the outroar is that we don't have an avenue to protest. We don't have an mm. avenue to like a sit in like people that try to do it peacefully in their own way have been mm. reprimanded. Mm. Mm. And then to to see now the state presenting mm. their own set of talking points that yeah. we weren't allowed to, to. And I think that's why people are angry. So like you mm. tell us not to talk about it. You kept saying not to talk about it. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. are telling our kids this. Yeah. You know, and mm. I think that's that is pro that probably adds to that that fire la. Because right. yeah, that's mm. a great point uh, because mm. literally it was like last week, right? Where yeah. uh when yeah, so called protesters, yeah, like yeah, people yes. who carry carry yeah. watermelon umbrellas and all. Yeah. They got uh apparently there was a lot of news that they got called up by police la, mm. for conversation. So people are like, huh, we can't even like talk like peacefully talk about these things la. and then a week later suddenly MOE got these slides come yeah. out and even 23rd Feb uh, the the there was an article on one of the most quoted media outlets in Singapore The Straits Times of course mm. um, where MHA confirmed that two Singaporean influencers were advised on content about Gaza conflict mm. so yeah. one of them attended a pro-Palestinian protest in Japan posted on social media and she was contacted by the authorities after someone lodged a complaint like, and, and asked to to um, advise against encouraging Singaporeans to protest overseas. Mm. And then another one also, yeah, so so they both got kind of like called out for, for the second one was for crowdfunding. Yeah. Uh, mm. Crowdfunding for hum humanitarian aid. So yeah, exactly that. There are cases where people are being called out for talking about this, sharing their own perspectives and then, but MOE can't. Like. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I think the next day, Straits Time Forum came out. I was like, ask ST, can I attempt protest overseas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo. Yeah, so, so I mean, this, this thing, like, like it's it just, it just, yeah, a dent. Uh, I don't know whether it takes away from uh, PM, uh, I mean, DPM. PM, soon to be PM, oh, yeah. Lawrence Wong's budget. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, 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 the vouchers are still coming. Like, the right? vouchers yeah, are still yeah, coming. And people are still debating the budget as well. Actually, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. But this thing, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it's weird. Like, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. And I think towards the end of the interview, they were asking, like, do you think the parents can opt out of this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay. And he was just like, you know, it's, 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 it's not a, a, a class about Israel Hamas it's a, you, you want your kid to opt out of like character and civic education you know like I think that that's like the essentially what he said like, like no like your kid like this is something they will teach but I think I, I'll be surprised if they keep teaching the conflict in, mm -hmm. in this module I feel like the, the the smart thing to do is just to remove it because you can teach all of these things yeah. about how to be nice to your friends without talking about this. There are so yeah. much, so many better things to talk about. Correct, correct. You know? Because ultimately the, the title of the the presentation is about uh, how to resolve conflict, like, yeah. right? Yeah. It's generically about a better solution resolving conflicts, disagreement. Yeah. yeah. So it can be about a lot of different kinds of conflicts exactly. and Simply go. Just uh, do so a case study on simply go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking choose this. <laughs> There's a lot of other examples. <laughs> the there. case yeah. study. Yeah, that's the one learning point. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not di not shitting on like your the desire of the thing you want to teach. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But choose a better case study. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but now I'm actually curious, like the CCE, right? Uh, yeah, how they trained the teachers, or at least like brief the teachers on how to teach these classes, lah. Because all you're seeing is the slides, lah. You don't mm. know what the teachers are saying, uh, alongside the slides or so, lah. Yeah. So, so that's the other part that that uh, as a parent, you're like, oh, you know, mm. I know that this is what's on the slide. Yes, maybe you can you can argue it's factual and all that, but the teacher teaching it, like, who's the teacher teaching it? What are there? opinions about it like, right you don't yeah. know you know you really don't know yeah 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 so but i haven't seen 
too many teachers being quoted or, or I don't think you dare uh. to talk about yeah. it, right? As a teacher. Yeah, man. Yeah. Three keys, yeah. This is key character key. and citizenship education, uh, CCE. Yeah. yeah. So this is what happened, Chanju Singh, is CCS. CCS. Yeah. CCS and CCE. The case <laughs> of the CCS and CCE. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. But you know, keeping stuff factual is mm. always uh, the hardest, uh, right? And uh, as we, I mean, our second topic is about the topic of oh, someone yeah. who <laughs> didn't keep stuff factual yeah, and then yeah. later has sort of paid a price for it. Mm. Uh, not usually the kind of goofy topic we do, but you know, the first topic is so serious that this almost looks goofy in comparison. <laughs> uh, mm. right. and, and what um, is this topic about? Uh? It is the news that uh, Leong Man Wai from uh, the previous Secretary General of the Progress Singapore Party, PSP, on, 20, on February 20. Uh, 20th or 22nd? Mm. Uh, no, 23rd. Uh, it was announced that he is stepping down as Secretary General mm. um, to take responsibility for the social media post he had put up that was Pofmat. Mm. Which is something mm. we covered on a previous episode. Yeah. Uh, but just to recap, I think he was visiting a couple in West Coast, an elderly couple, mm. and they were telling him the the their financial plight and how difficult um, things were because I think he had lost his vision and she had an injured ankle and they were saying that they were only getting this amount of help from the government. Like Mr. Leong put up a very passionate post saying that more should be done mm. uh, and it is uh, that these people are not having it easy and, and kind of said that yeah, more help needs to be given. Then MCC, M- MFI? M- 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 MSF. MSF uh, came out and said, no, they actually looked at they they put out in public the MediSafe and CPF savings of these individuals mm. and talked about how much help they are actually getting down to like the amount of grants they are getting. La. which felt a bit like a bit doxing there, yeah. but it was mm. Pofmat. La. And then Leong Manwai came out and put a post saying that, you know, he was caught up in the emotions and yeah. he didn't do his due due checks. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then February 20th, 20th he stepped down. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, a bit... A bit surprising, lah. Mm. Uh, I mean, the the thing is, he he stepped down, but he's still going to be part of the CDC, the uh, Central Executive Committee. CEC, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct, yeah. CDC, you're thinking too much of your budget oh, vouchers. Oh, yeah, fuck <laughs> 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 yeah. Friday slip there. Oh, like, what's CDC? Uh, he's part. Of, he's still going to be part of the CEC, yeah. and uh, Hazel Pua will be taking over as Secretary General. Mm. But uh, when you all heard this news, uh, what was what was going through your minds? When I read the, the headline, I was like, oh, but like, as I read the article, it's like, it's not, nothing's changed. Like. Nothing's mm-hmm. changing. Uh. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, I mean, I, I think, I don't know, it could, because he, he became sec gen after... Francis Yuan, I think, last year, right? Was it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I, I think these things don't really affect this public consciousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have actually become a big fan of him over time in parliament, mm-hmm. right? The way mm-hmm. he argues and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, some I, I think this is not even the first time, right? That he's, yeah. that he's accused of, of like lying in in parliament or anything. But I think he he definitely represents a, a part of the population, la, Like like yeah. of, of, to be able to to go up there to to argue mm, mm, with mm. the incumbent people. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it did seem to me like a lot of probably internal politics or something going on because at the end of the day, he's still uh, an MP, la, Right? Mm. He's still in parliament. He's still giving speeches. Even I think. Today or yesterday, the parliamentary sitting, he's still there. Yeah. So he's still doing his thing, like, Just that in name, he's not the leader of the party, like, right? Yeah. Which, like, like, I think, like, what you're saying is that it doesn't matter to the yeah. regular person. What matters is the overall image of the party and all that, like. Yeah. Mm. But it, it does make me question, like, oh, what is going on inside inside right. there, like? Is it feels a bit like like the Manchester United dressing room now, like, right? where like, <laughs> like sometimes they win matches or sometimes wow, the young players are very good then the next thing they lose a match and everything is falling apart. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, a bit, a bit, um, I guess if you are, if you are like, like, like you are that, like where you are, you are, you've become a fan of him, like, right? <laughs> but you're a bit worried about the infrastructure around him, like, right? If everything seems to be happening like that. Right. Uh, but just to clarify, it's alleged, like, that there was a uh, infighting within the party. Alleged, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alleged, 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 alleged. Because before the, we get Pofmat also. Because, yeah, the PSP was questioned on this and they said they would not respond to any uh, rumors or anonymous comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like, I guess the optics of it, because they've had four. Secretary Generals yeah. since 2019. Yeah. Miss Hazelpoir was Secretary General uh, at one point as well. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, I thought she's now the oh, new yeah. Secretary. No, on the optics of how... Uh, oh, yeah. So no, she's the was, fourth. It was Tan Jing Bok, then Francis Yen. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, then yeah. Leung Man Wai, then Hazelpoir yeah. now. 
Um, yeah, like, so so it doesn't paint the best look. They did they did say that you know now he's going to be free of party administration, so he can you know really continue to do what he does best, like. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, like, it, it doesn't like maybe he'll be more unhinged in parliament, uh. <laughs> As the he, he's like now he really like you know what I don't give a shit it's anymore. Very colorful tie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because I mean, like, um, they, in, in this article, they talked about how he had made like unsubstantiated allegations in Parliament uh, mm. before, like, I think there was an allegation over a bribery case linked to Capital Offshore and Marine, yeah. which he withdrew. Uh, and yeah, he has had some run-ins where he was called out, and I think mm. he apologized, like. right. But I think over time, I've also gotten to appreciate him in Parliament. I think he's gotten more savvy, mm. and sometimes he just asks the questions that might sound a bit, how you say, uh irrational but it's what people are thinking yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. and that's the most important thing yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it was one podcast we covered recently about the the investigation into the uh, police officer who uh, yes. who uh, committed um, uh, suicide right and yeah. it was just Leong Manwai asking a few questions that caused Shamugam to respond in a way that also didn't look the best la. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess one thing to note is that the those instances where he has said something uh, slightly inaccurate that he has taken back all happened in parliament la. Mm. And parliamentary debates, I think they're protected by, you know, your parliamentary privilege right, uh, yeah. in some way. So this the uh, this might be the first time that they officially can catch him outside of parliament and say, ha, there you go. Uh, you know, you said something completely false and here's a Pofman to go with it. Um, mm. So in some sense, it's official, right? It's officially, mm. you fucked up officially. Uh, but I guess, yeah, I'm also quite, now so many Pofmas go out there for different things that it's almost like uh, the gravity of a Pofma is kind of lost to me. So I, I was like, oh, how come it's so serious, man? This Unless thing? it's like a next level, like 4D chess kind of thing. Mm. Because now, like what you say, the gravity, Pofma is like, like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's badge like, of honor. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like a badge of honor. But I've also seen people point out that, you know, isn't it sad that Pofma is causing us to lose good opposition leaders? So, mm. you know, playing on the sentiment, right, okay. of vilifying Pofma, right? Right. Maybe that's their 4D chess, no? Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, there's this TikToker. Um, I think he's been like Pofma three, four times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he sits in the car and yeah, yeah, yeah. Plays, right? Yeah. And then he made a rap about that. Is it? Oh, boy. It's like, he 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 freestyle over dirt off your shoulder by Jay Z. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it's a song about Pofma. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like recently, wow. when I think after his third Pofma or something. Like, <laughs> 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 so yeah, I, I feel like when Pofma first came out, we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. see, like remember yeah. the first person that kind of like now we don't even. It's like okay, a Pofma is just another thing because like there's yeah. no real consequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. like you, I don't know, you pin it to the top of your yeah, Pofma la. That's yeah. it la, right? Yeah. yeah, but it's like you say like it's a badge of honor, like link in bio la, You know, you put yeah, your Pofma yeah, yeah. link there also. Yeah, yeah, for for like a content creator, maybe yeah. like, that that makes you more badass. Yeah. Right? But, but then you know you know like how if you want to guilt trip someone, right? If they do something that annoys you a bit, but you kind of make the consequences of that even more, right? Mm. That person will feel a bit more guilty, and to the other people, they will also come across as more douchey, right? Right. Yeah. Like, let's say if Terence says something to me that I find like you know condescending or something, and then I go home, I cry to my wife, mm. right? Then she will be like, "How can Terence be so mean to you that you come back and cry?" Mm. So then she, her perception of you will be like, "Terence is a douche, lah." Yeah, yeah. So in this case, if PSP is playing that next level thing, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna show how destructive Pofma can be mm. right? because it could result in opposition parties having like internal. Conflict lah. Right, right, right. <laughs> and getting the neutral person to be like, hey, actually, maybe Pofma is a bit too powerful. Right. That's like some next level shit. Man. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past uh, Leong Man Wai, honestly. Oh, is it? I feel like his brain works on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he like comes up with a plan. I'll be like, okay, dope. Yeah, like, like you know. That is like, because w- it won't change what he's going to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're all on the same page. He's like the Doctor Strange of yeah. like, politics. Like. He's seen all the 17 <laughs> million possibilities. <laughs> and now he's chosen this one. That will... He just turns to his way, Popma, yeah. There's only one <laughs> way to do this. <laughs> but his during the the debate over the reserves, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she brought up that point about how land sales should be uh, divided into 12. Mm. Mm. And PM Lee said that that's actually not a terrible idea that they can discuss that that, that they can be discussed. Oh, is it? Oh. So like I I remember hearing that and I'm just like that is oh. that, that feels fresh mm. right mm. like PM Lee accepting an opposition member's idea and not completely saying no. 
you know and then she also brought it up I think yesterday again she was just like very heartened to say PM Lee say that and I mm. hope that they will continue looking into that Oh, of wow. dividing a land sale over the period of the lease. So maybe in the internal so, PSP team, she was telling Yong Man, why PMD got got say any of the Go or not? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's a the right? <laughs> Compliments from PMD. One take under his <laughs> poor. <laughs> then Yong Man was like, ah, oh, fuck, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot, <laughs> I, cannot, <laughs> I, cannot <laughs> I have to step down. Uh. The other chart is how many puff masks you get. <laughs> how many times <laughs> you must say sorry in parliament. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, maybe yeah. Uh, Oh, wow, yeah. interesting. Uh. I guess it's, it's all heating up for the election that will be happening in the next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess I was, I think someone, one of our listeners was pointing out to us that uh, if you watch the Parliament now, Leong Man Wai addresses the camera directly a lot more now than he used to. Uh. Uh. So someone's pointing out that, hey, that's like, it tells you that he, he's he got the, you know, the GE in mind, uh, the way he talks about things, he's addressing the, the audience directly and not looking at the other parliamentarians sitting around so much radio. Right. So, uh, I, I was quite surprised by this news. Uh, I thought that he was going to be the face of the party going forward. Yeah. But but seems like maybe, maybe Touching Box still got some legs mm-hmm. left in him. Uh. Actually, another point that, that I see in this article is like, um, it was highlighted that in contrast to, you know, how Iswaran was like kind of, yes, until like until proven guilty he still gets his ministerial like uh, reduced uh, salary and all that PSP is almost like okay you do something wrong you own up mm. we're not going to counsel you for two years and then you come out and you're still having sex with another mm. person in parliament mm. and you do something wrong even if it's not criminal or anything we will not tolerate that mm. you step down right mm. which in some ways like hey that's okay, refreshing also right yeah maybe that's like just uh, the policy of full transparency full transparency yeah. right yeah. but then like that then that would back the question of like is full transparency really that productive at yeah. the end of the day <laughs> so if you're gonna have four side gen in four years then like what are we doing here? it's like Manchester United la. It's like, guys <laughs> what the hell is going on man <laughs> just stick with one and make yeah. it work yeah. exactly uh, it's, it's player true, uh, true. PSP yeah but, but yeah, la, so I mean, interesting la, to see how this shapes up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess the elections are on everyone's minds, la, right? Yeah. Uh, everything announced during the budget and then now like this whole this whole thing with PSP. Mm. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting few months la, leading up to whenever the election's going to be called. La. Yeah, I feel like the MOE thing, not, not that I want to circle back there, but I feel like yeah. that has probably pushed the elections forward or like, yeah, back For a few back- months. Oh really? Just because of the MOE thing? I I feel like yeah, like it, it, this they will try to spend as much time as they can to to damage control this before uh, they they uh, want an election. Right? More distance, lah, right? Yeah. More distance. Oh. Definitely pushed oh. it back. Yeah. Oh. See, yeah, uh, interesting. Uh. And I mean, it, like, I'm curious whether it will also be brought up in Parliament. Mm. 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 Yeah, right. I, I bet. I guess Chan Chun Singh will have to come in to tell, explain some yeah, stuff to yeah. everybody. Yeah. 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 Hey, Maliki, go up, please. Uh. <laughs> 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 I don't talk to straight times already, sir. Please, uh, 30 minutes, no. I sit down on a weekend, no. I sit down on a weekend, bro. Go lah, bro. Please, uh. <laughs> he looked very shag. Like. He looked very shag in the interview. Like, like in parliament, uh, they just messaging each other. Hey, go, you go, go. go, go. You go, you go. He's <laughs> <laughs> nudging each other. <laughs> yeah, like, put up a speaker. Yeah, Maliki has something to say. <laughs> no, no, I don't have. I don't have. <laughs> A big arrow oh, class. Oh, uh. another parliament session to go for. Uh. Yeah. Cool, man. But yeah. Awesome. Cool, cool. We yeah. also, so at the end of our podcast, we mm. always have a, a segment, right? Yeah. Uh, called One Shock Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I was just telling Harish, I prepared for that. Awesome. awesome. Oh, but but yeah. just not, nothing to promote your own show, because we've already done that. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, I will do it again okay, later. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe, but we, maybe we'll go first just sure. to give, it a, give you a bit of time to see. Uh, how you gonna frame it, la. So yeah. Harish, you have your one yeah. thing. My one shock thing. I don't know. Was this your one shock thing? The previous one where Dante no, 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 debut? No, it wasn't. Uh, it, okay. no, you know, I thought no, it was right. yours. No, no, it wasn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so over the weekend, I believe, uh, Dante Chen, who mm. uh, was, uh, I mean, is the first Singaporean wrestler in the WWE, la. Mm. Uh, and. Like, I mean, we saw him before when he was in Singapore. I think, have you been to SPW yeah, also? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he went by the name of Traxxas, right? Traxxas. Traxxas. We did a video with him. And then I think last year, it came out that he had been selected to like start training with WWE. In NXT. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and NXT, NXT. Which is yeah. the, almost like the, the developmental. If you're talking about someone who has been in wrestling matches himself, you know. Oh, fuck, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, checking. Yeah. Like literally been 
slammed multiple yeah, times. Yeah, that's right. If I'm, I feel like he was, he came He slammed to, you? No, he came and watched one of the shows I was on. Oh. Yeah, 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 the yeah. shows that we do is like a small back alley kind of stuff like, and he knows the wrestler so he he was there. I see. So you're a big wrestling fan as well? Like? I, I am. I'm a big AEW fan actually. AEW specifically, wow. Yeah, like, uh-huh. I'm a big fan of the WWE product even though I'm very, very happy for, for Dante to be there. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I remember, like you say, right? Like, like this is the guy we used to watch in Topayo. Yeah. yeah. And right? he was we, like, his head was shaved because he was in army, army. or something. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I remember watching him sing the Lion King theme song. Like when he was challenging the statement for the title, he was yeah. like, I just can't wait to be king. And I was just like, yeah. Who is this <laughs> guy? And then he lost. I was like, oh no, why did he lose? Yeah, he yeah. lost because he was going to the WWE. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, it was always fun to watch him and the statement because that would be the highlight. Both of them are yeah, like the mini fucking events. athletic. Yeah. Um, and and then, it's also featured yeah. in one of our Ministry of Funny videos at one time. He was, <laughs> yeah. We dressed him up as Trump oh. and then got him like to oh, do some wrestling moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you were Kim jong yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing <laughs> Kim Jong-un. Yeah, Kim yeah, Jong-un, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the day that he came and had that meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Great, but uh, yeah, he, I mean, the crazy thing, he looks like, I mean, uh, I did not realize he was that huge until I saw him on this, on this, like, on TV, on SmackDown. And I was like, wow, shit. Yeah. He looks just as big as those yeah. wrestlers you see on TV. Yeah. 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 I mean, Singapore, he stood out because he was a, like a giant. Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't look small when he goes there. It's like, you know, whenever you see like someone you think is big, then they go play like uh, basketball or yeah. something. They look tiny. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so in, in this one, WWE Smackdown, he came, he fought a... Uh, Braun, Braun Breaker. Braun yeah. Breaker. Right. Uh, I mean, he 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 lost. Yeah. But mm. even for those three, four minutes, it felt like it. Hey, like, I remember when I used to watch WWE last time, there will always be this, these newcomers that come. They get yeah. a few minutes, but slowly it increases, yeah. increases, increases. Yeah. So, wow, it's awesome. And the commentator did say, he's like, Singaporean, first Singaporean wrestler. Yeah, and he's, actually, when he yeah. was in NXT, he was already very popular with the fans. He oh, was, is it? He's like a sort of like a gatekeeper. Like, when he is like the the boss of NXT, in a way. Oh. Like, when you're a new wrestler joining NXT, you will fight, 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 until you get to fight him. Like, oh, he is, is like it? The, the gatekeeper, in oh, a way. Oh, so he's... He's got to that level already. He, he does have a reputation oh, among the fans fuck. already. Uh, and even it, man. in this SmackDown match, he's fighting Braun Breaker. Breaker is a big is, star. Yeah. He's a big star. Uh, and to be put in that position of putting that guy over, is he's like Scott Steiner, big Papa Pump's yeah, yeah. Uh, kid. Yeah. Oh, he's this Scott Steiner's kid. Braun Breaker. Uh, so yeah, to, I mean, you you like you like you get to be a jobber, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is you, you lose people, but you get to be a jobber to to big names and oh, that's, that's a good the, sign. Yeah. That's the term a jobber, is yeah, it? Yeah, you go in to do the job, like, you lose to the oh. yeah. I watch a lot of those kind of uh, insider videos about wrestling. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah I, I felt like Dante Chen here, he his selling was good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he, he really does that thing about looking like he's getting injured yeah. very yeah, well. Yeah. And the knocks are hard, man. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. So so yeah, and, and I like that the commentator didn't say, Oh, he's from the far east or something <laughs> like <laughs> that, you know. I was half expecting th- that to go and he said, No, it's the first Singapore wrestler. Fucking That's right. solid, man. That's and right. SmackDown yeah. is quite a a, a it's big just, event. I think it's the, right? biggest, Huge, it's right? the yeah. biggest weekly show, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. solid. Yeah, so it's the same my, show that uh, I think the rock will be on next week. This this week or so. He's going back on SmackDown. Yeah. Is he, the, he I mean, wrestle? I, uh, not the wrestler, but you know, I, I've been talking to him about this. Yeah. Uh, like, The Rock has been he's back. basically back and like now he's like the bad guy Rock. Yeah, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. fucking he's corporate. Fucking great, man. Like yeah. it's such a good performance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, people, a lot of people have been watching SmackDown recently because mm. Rock is coming back. Uh. Hell yeah, man. Well, yeah, happy to see that. Yeah. Cool. All right. And Terrence, cool. what's your one show thing? Uh, mine is actually something closer to home. Where uh somehow I came because probably because my kid like I came across this video of like uh a lion dance that was performed at Orchard Center Point recently la, like like literally like two weeks ago for Chinese New Year mm. and I know it just sounds like the most uh strange thing la, but it, actually the performance was like really athletic and really quite impressive did you watch it live no or it's just a video that, of it uh, so I found a video of it and it was at Center Point like a week or two ago. And uh, yeah, you know, Chinese New Year, you see lion dance and usually it's like, oh, they come and then they just lay out some oranges. Huh? But this one's like the, apparently they, it's by this troupe called the Wen Yang uh, Sports Association, Wen Yang Lion Dance Troupe. And they are, I think, the last champions of the last lion dance competition at, oh, at the one at Takashimaya, the square. Oh, oh. So those guys are, I mean, it's really quite impressive like, what they do. And, and uh, it, like, uh, I... You, Anyone should watch it like, just to see how athletic lion dance can actually be. Like uh, yeah. they're hanging off poles and like carrying each other or like doing like, you know, uh, those 
what, what do you call those cheerleader moves? Mm. You know, American cheerleaders, they stand the shoulders and then they, they flip and everything. They're doing it on like, with while wearing the whole line dance regalia and everything. Uh, mm. It's damn impressive. La. And I was like, uh, if there's any like, uh, kind of like, uh, cheesy old, uh, kind of like traditional kind of dance that maybe I might want to send my kid to go and learn all that. It'll be, it's, it'll be something like that. Because yeah. it's, it's really athletic. Uh. So you feel proud? Uh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that this is that there are these young people still trying to keep on these very old traditions. Uh, and that the crowd was also very appreciative and everything was all. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put the link to the YouTube video in the description. Whoa. Do you know who Bob Sanger is? Sounds familiar. Bob Sanger is that? Oh, the content creator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, He's also a lion dance. Oh, huh? he's a Malay guy that the does one who, dance. who put his face close to the camera and no, says, no, no, that's Zaki. Bob, oh, Bob uh. Sanger is a guy that was like live streaming and selling tech stuff during COVID. Oh, okay. What was it? And then like some kid asked him to buy cigarettes. He's like, you see this? This boy asked me to buy cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and then like yeah, Chinese New Year there was a video out, out where he was doing line dance. Also Bob oh, Sanger. Seriously? Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Have you all ever done line dance before? No, so not me personally. My no. cousins used to do line dance when I was a kid. Like they would go for the training and everything. But oh, I think is it? They already stopped. But is it a thing when you all were growing up, like as an option? No, I think traditionally seen <laughs> no, as very, a very abing thing, lah. <laughs> just wondering, ah, just wondering, yeah, it's like very abing thing. Very thing. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Like you go there and yeah, like, you're gonna you're gonna meet bad people, gangsters, that kind of thing, lah. Uh, society, all that. Yeah. Now, now I think a bit different. Like what NUS got line dance troupe yeah. and all these things. Yeah, but but I mean, uh, I mean at my age, cannot lah. I think mm. yeah, I'll probably you want to, unless you want to see the line break your leg and then, like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't then, like, you're also the one, right? Very sad. Yeah. <laughs> but you, but yeah. you, but you, you can, right? Because you, Lion you were, dance. I mean, you were just in a wrestling ring not too long. Yeah, ago, that's right. Like, at least six months ago, already, yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> la, like still in your 20s. You know, it's just a chill lion, la. chill <laughs> lion. <laughs> walking lion. Yeah, walking that's lion. Like, you know, the day I, I was in a taxi, we in Juchet, driving past a lion dance performance. Uh, and then, mm. like, there was a dragon, like a big mascot dragon. Uh, but it's like the fat, uh, like Dragon Knight Dragon uh, the taxi driver was quiet the whole ride but when he saw it he was like hey the dragon like that one a dragon <laughs> that one not dragon uh, that one dinosaur uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember during Chinese New Year there was like a, a slight debate about the portrayal of a dragon the one mm. in Chinatown like, right is it no the Chinatown one is okay like even though he's dopey he's a yeah, dragon yeah. Yeah. but like when the Dragon Knight like all those different types of dragons like Western dragons. Those uh, are not oh, dragons for Chinese dragon, people. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. you mean it looked like like the like animated dragon kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, like, like the dragon. nearest dragon in uh, Game of Thrones. That's not uh, a dragon to Chinese people. Wait, so they're uh, saying that those dragons are uh, like like wussy dragons compared to the Chinese yeah, to the long ass oh, the real dragon, dragon with the Chinese yeah. like the MBS drone dragon uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 that's a real dragon <laughs> that's yeah. a real dragon dinosaur that one dinosaur cool man but uh, what's cool. what's your one show thing Jackie well, I just finished watching this uh, series by Nathan Fielder. You guys know mm, Nathan Fielder? Yeah, yeah. His newest series is called The Curse. Mm. Mm. Uh, he made it with Benny Safdie. It's a dark comedy, is it? Yeah, it's a dark comedy and it's, yeah, I, it's, I don't even have the words to describe it. Mm. It is, honestly, the ending of this show, 10 episodes, the ending of this show is the, f like, I, I genuinely, like, scream. <laughs> scream. It's like dark comedy verging onto uh, horror. Oh. Like like a very neat key and peel was it? Uh, yeah. uh, Jordan, Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele, Peele yeah. style like is, is veering into like horror. Wait, what's the name of the series? Sorry. The Curse. Yeah, I the heard curse. about it recently. Yeah. Who's the actress? Oh. Uh, Emma Stone. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they do like a Q and A at the Lincoln Center uh, after every episode. I think the last episode, the Q and A, is uh, hosted by Christopher Nolan. Oh shit! Talking what about the, the finale because this show, honestly, it's like a it's. I think you guys will appreciate the filmmaking of it because yeah. Benny Safdie was saying something about how they over expose, saturate the, the footage to make because they wanted to make something that doesn't belong on TV. Um, they tried to go against every what single What has Benny Safdie made before? Uh, he was part of Safdie Brothers made like Uncut Jams, Chosen mm. Ones. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And what was the premise of the, the curse actually? Uh, so Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone, they are a couple. They are like a rich couple and then yeah. they are starting this new... A TV show where this couple is like building smart houses in like a poor community in New Mexico and they're trying to make a, a TV show out of that and it's how uh. about how they're affecting the community oh, okay. that's, a, that's a very bland way of explaining it yeah. because yeah it's, it's, it's just such a fucking creep because the two of them are very bad people okay. essentially uh, in the show got it 
Yeah. Uh, it's on, on what, what platform is it on? It's on like Paramount Plus, but you know, I, I, I watched it my own way. So. <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean now now on YouTube I, so I think the the thing about the show is that it is very slow paced it's like 10 mm. episodes long and it's it's not like the boom and so uh, audience reviews are very bad mm. oh, but okay. critical reviews are great I really enjoyed it like if you have the time to just sit down and watch it like there are some moments that are really just yeah it's it's mind blowing wow, seriously sure. really? wow. and how long is each episode? Uh, 40, 45 minutes 45 minutes uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. did you see yeah. his Last show, Nathan Fielder's last show, the rehearsal. No. That might be an easier sell, actually. So, the <laughs> rehearsal is about how he thinks um, if you have an important life task, mm -hmm. you can come to him and he will help you rehearse for it. Mm -hmm. Like the first episode, this guy says like, I have been in this uh, pop quiz team for 10 years. And 10 years ago, when I joined, I lied to them. I told them I have a degree, uh. but I do not. Mm -hmm. uh, we have become such good friends playing this pop quiz that we just never talk about it, but I feel bad. Like, I want to confess to them. Yeah, uh. yeah. And so Nathan comes up with a plan for him. It's like, okay, so on this night of the pub quiz, this is where you will stand. This is what uh. you will say. And then he builds an exact replica of the set of the bar that they're going to do the quiz in. Yep. For him to is this like keep a rehearsing it reality or yeah it's a reality show. Oh, reality it's like show. his show it's like Nathan that. for you Nathan uh, for okay, you okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rehearsal is helping people rehearse for oh. important life events uh, oh seriously. shit he's yeah. a weirdo man but in a great way yeah, in, great yeah way, I think yeah. he is slowly after the curse he is now slowly starting to break character and you are gonna realize his genius and, and so he, he came up with the curse and he wrote it is it him and Benny Safdie oh. so uh. Benny Safdie watched Nathan for you and then was like such a big fan that they so I want to be friends with him yeah. and then they, they work together or something. Uh, oh, yeah. Solid, yeah. Yeah, Nathan oh. Fielder is... Yeah, yeah he's, he's one he's of great, my heroes yeah. for sure. Solid. Oh. Cool, man. Awesome recommendation. Except that, yeah, we got to... It's long, right? Yeah, we, we have get, to find our way. Get, like, get onto Paramount Plus. Yeah, get onto Paramount Plus. <laughs> yes, Jackie, get onto Paramount <laughs> Plus. <laughs> <laughs> a very accessible one, Jackie. Yeah, very accessible. So, uh, just want to like give us a recap oh, yeah, on your on your show and where people can find you, where people can get tickets. So, yeah, I just bought the website Jackie.sg. Just so, <laughs> I mean like three three weeks ago, like, uh, so you can like you can get the tickets there. Uh I've I've left these flyers all around Singapore. Mm -hmm. You can find them at Mahmoud Standor in uh, Haji uh, Lane, in Shrub, in Golden Mile. Yeah. Uh you can scan that QR code, you can take the flyer. Also, if you if you buy a ticket, you can go to Mahmoud Standor, uh -huh. get one dollar off a slushie. Oh, oh and Mahmoud yeah. Standor is run by uh another comedian. Another Siraj. 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 Yeah. 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 So the show is on the 13th of March at the Projector Cine Leisure in the Yangtze Hall. Mm. It's called Cuckoo Bird of Value. And they can get their tickets at Jackie.sg. Jackie.sg. And if people wow. want to find you online, where should they go? Uh, Jackie Young Comedy. J-A-C-K-Y. Uh, that's an Instagram handle. Uh. That's my Instagram, my oh, TikTok, okay. that's everything. But I'm mostly only active on Instagram. But you got Telegram also, right? I have a Telegram channel, actually. Yeah, it's an uh, announcement yeah. channel. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Telegram, you type Jackie N Friends, mm -hmm. the letter N. Uh, that's uh, like a channel where I announce stuff. If I'm on holiday, I'd send like videos there. And, and oh, like I see, oh I see. solid, man. It's like your, your own private OnlyFans. Kind yeah, of thing, like. in a way. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except it's not explicit. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, la, not yet. <laughs> not not yet. yet. Uh, but yeah, thanks yeah. so much for cool. coming, man. Jackie. Thanks for having me. Thanks for yeah. allowing me to come and discuss the of course, man. Yeah. topics we have Anytime. discussed today. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Remember mm -hmm. to follow us and subscribe. Uh, our 500th episode special will coming be coming up, coming out coming next up. week, yeah. which we filmed on a trishaw yesterday. Yes. Uh, yeah. Our first ever podcast on the streets. Mm. Uh, and we'll be launching ministryoffunny.com. Mm. Uh, also our own website. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, more details to come. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.